Merry Christmas and welcome to Terra Nova Church's Christmas Eve service. My name is Paul uh, and I have the pleasure of serving as a pastor here at Terra Nova Church. Uh, it's also my pleasure to welcome you to our Christmas Eve service, however, wherever, uh, or even kind of whenever you may be watching this. Christmas Eve, uh, like many of our holidays, comes with traditions or familiar rituals and some of those traditions around our holidays have things to do with like the food we eat. Like in my family, we eat grasshopper pie each year. Or maybe it's a present that constantly gets passed around the family. Like in my family, we pass around something called a dilly bar. Or maybe your traditions have something to do with where and when your family gathers, like at grandma's house every year, or games you play, or activities you do, like make Legos on Christmas Day, or cut out paper snowflakes, traditions are filled uh, in our Christmas Eve services. And perhaps, like my family, uh, perhaps going to a Christmas Eve service where familiar stories are read, songs are sung, prayers are recited, perhaps all of that is part of your Christmas traditions as well. And yet tonight, like much of 2020, those traditions are looking different. We're, we're watching this on a pre-recorded video. We're not gathering together to sing Silent Night as we light candles. But even in the different, tradition can remain. And that is good, because in a year of constant change, there can be peace and there can be security. And the fact that the Christmas story hasn't changed, it remains as rich and as relevant as it ever has. And so for us and for all of God's people in all times, when the circumstances of life make it feel like faith is giving way to doubt, like love is giving way to hate, joy is giving way to sadness, or hope is giving way to despair, when those things feel like they're weighing heavy, like they might be even in 2020, when we find ourselves like all of God's people are finding ourselves waiting upon him, peace and hope can be found by retelling the familiar stories of what God has done and restating the timeless promises that he has said. So tonight, as we return to the familiar story of Christmas, it's my prayer that our joy in Christ may be ignited and our hope can be secured even this Christmas, as we engage these traditions in a different way. Let me start by giving you an overview of our service and inter introducing you by way of giving thanks to some of the people uh, you'll see in this video, or maybe you won't see in this video, but all of these folks are members of our family here at Terra Nova, and so we want to just pause and give a thanks. Thank you to Austin and Elizabeth Hill and Jen Wilson, who've spent a ton of time filming and recording and doing the graphics for our Christmas Eve service. Thank you to Annie Rogers and Elizabeth Nasman for doing some of the decorations that are here in our space that you're seeing on this video as well. Thank you to all the readers who will be reading scripture as you'll see them later in this video. And thank you to the band members as well, Elizabeth Hill, Jen Wilson, Nate Rogers, and Sarah Russell Scholl as they lead us in song through this video. On the screen will also be in order of our worship for tonight. You'll see that we're going to sing uh, seven songs. There'll also be uh, seven scripture passages. The scripture passages are Old Testament passages that speak about the hope of a Messiah, a promised Messiah. Each of those passages will be on the screen so that you can see it uh, as it is being read to you. The seven songs that we'll sing, uh, alternating with the scriptures, some of those may be familiar, some of those may be new songs for you. Lyrics to all of those songs will also be on the screen. That way you can join us in singing as you watch this video. And in the middle of those songs and those scripture readings, there'll be a message uh, that hopefully connects us to the hope that is found in the Christmas story. So let me pray, uh, and then we'll get into singing and reciting scripture in the familiar story of Christmas. Lord, can you do what you do best tonight, even through video and through technology, wherever we may be as we gather with family and friends, can you do what you do best? Can you open our hearts and can you open our minds 
to see Jesus as believable and beautiful. As we rehearse, as we recite, as we reflect upon the things that may be familiar to us or may even be brand new for us, may they ignite hope in our souls. Spirit, can you make the message of Christ, that that message that our Messiah, our Savior, our Redeemer has come, may that news be a wonder for our soul tonight, may it be a joy for us tonight, and may that fuel worship in our homes tonight and tomorrow, and may it also fuel our faithfulness to Jesus in the days ahead. It's in the name of Christ we pray all these things. Amen. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Isaiah 7:14.
But you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. Micah 5.2 To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9-6. Silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no Christmas traditions. It's, it's hard to think of Christmas traditions and not think of Christmas songs that we sing to and we listen to. Whether it's silent night and lighting candles on Christmas Eve or whether it's during the holiday season when you're in the living room with your kids or in the car pretending 
to be a donkey as you sing along with Dominic, the Italian Christmas donkey. Singing and songs and music is so deeply ingrained and a part of our Christmas rituals. A song for many of us that may be included in that, one of my favorite Christmas songs is the song, O Holy Night, which of course Mariah Carey has the best rendition of. But O Holy Night is one of my favorite Christmas songs. And the, there's a phrase in the first verse of that song that we're going to spend our time looking at uh, and thinking about tonight. But I'm going to read to you the first verse uh, to kind of introduce and put that back before us. But here's the first verse of O Holy Night. O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. The phrase in that first verse that I want us to spend our time on and look at this Christmas Eve is that phrase, a thrill of hope. It's two words put together that, that might not seem to naturally connect when we first look at them. Thrill and hope. Because to hope or to, to wish for something is not something that I think of as thrilling. I think of thrill and thrilling, and I think of riding a roller coaster or hearing a baby cry for the first time or standing before something grand in nature and being overwhelmed at its beauty. Those things I think of as thrilling or something maybe thrilling uh, if, if it's receiving something that we've long wanted or desired, but it's unexpected in the moment that we receive it, whether that's a surprise visit from a relative we haven't seen in a long time, whether that's surprise news that cancer is gone after a long battle, or whether it's just the receiving of a diploma after years of hard study and work. Usually, we only connect the idea of thrill with hope when the realization of that hope arrives. The process of hoping doesn't seem thrilling, but to realize a hope, that can seem thrilling, especially when that hope is something that we desperately need or have long waited for. And it's in there, I think, is the secret to the phrase in O Holy Night, how it connects this idea of hope with thrill. Because the author of the song knew that Christmas is the story of humanity's, mine, yours, ours, the story of humanity's greatest need being met and satisfied in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, at his birth, a new morning, a turning point in the drama of the relationship of God and his people. That dawned, that came at the birth of Jesus. And it was and it is, it's still a thrill for those who hope for it, for those who feel deeply the need for God, for those who have been, who are waiting for God, the birth of Christ can be thrilling news. Now, from here, from this point forward, I, I'd like to speak specifically to two different perspectives or two different groups of people, if you would, about this idea. First, for those listening and who may not necessarily connect the Christmas story, the birth of Christ, as the realization of your hopes, your wishes, and your dreams, perhaps. Sure, you see how the the birth story from 2,000 years ago, that gives us a good reason every year to be kind to one another, to have traditions, to express love, to be cheerful, to gather with family, to gather, to give gifts, all of those things. But you don't necessarily see how this story 2,000 years ago is the realization of hopes and dreams for yourself. So let me just share that the message of Christmas is first and foremost, before it's anything else, first and foremost, it's a celebration of God meeting humanity's greatest need in the person of Christ. And some of those needs, some of those wishes, some of those desires that are so deeply ingrained in who we are as people are alluded to in the song itself. So for all of you, all of those who are heavy, burdened, pinned down 
by the weight of sin, wondering if God will ever, ever be merciful to you. There's forgiveness in Christ for everyone. It's foretold to us in Micah chapter 7, verse 19, that when the prophecy of Christ, it said, He will tread our iniquities underfoot. He will cast all our sins into the depths of sea. So for somebody who is longing and waiting to know if God will be merciful to you and forgive you, it's there in the person of Jesus Christ. If you're watching tonight and you feel abandoned perhaps or ashamed or isolated, wondering if God really does love you, in Christ, your soul can feel its worth. This is something told to us in Ephesians 2, chapter, or chapter 2, verse 19 uh, as well. Through faith in Christ, we are no longer strangers and aliens, but we are children of God. Your soul can feel that worth in Christ. For those of us who may be weary, tired, toiling pilgrims, wondering, will God draw near to us? Christmas says rejoice because God is here. That's the message that is proclaimed at the birth of Christ in Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 and 23. It says this, she, that's, that's Mary, the mother of Jesus, she will bear a son and you will call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which means God with us. If this Christmas you are longing for, hoping for, if your soul is searching for forgiveness, belonging, peace, reconciliation, love, security with God, then let me invite you to be thrilled by the person of Jesus Christ because he realizes each of those hopes for your soul. And to a, a second group of people, uh, perhaps, who have known this story, this story is familiar to you. you, you have heard, you have believed that Christ is the arrival of your hope. Maybe it was some Christmas day in the past that you came to that realization and that faith. But perhaps, like many things, the thrill of that has worn off a little bit. Maybe time has faded your joy or life has jaded your faith. You may be longing for the return of the thrill that hope and faith in Christ can bring to your life. Or as the psalmist expresses it in Psalm 51 verse 12, you're, you're wondering, can, can the joy of your salvation be restored to you? So I want to encourage you with two things this Christmas, both of which I believe can breathe new life into your hope or return to you the joy of your salvation. First, if we, if we spent a longer amount of time in Psalm 51, we would, we would know that this psalm is, is a confessional psalm. It's one where the psalmist is confessing a deep sin. And the 11 verses before verse 12 where he, where he prays and asks for a returning of the joy of his salvation, those 11 verses are verses that make a confession of sin, a request for forgiveness again, for a sin pattern again. Because the psalmist knows that confession to Christ precedes joy in Christ. Right? Preceding the thrill of hope is the fatigue of despair. Preceding the light of truth is the darkness of doubt. Preceding the forgive, freedom of forgiveness is the weight of sin. So preceding joy in Christ is confession to Christ. To renew the thrill of a once realized hope of forgiveness. Let me encourage you this Christmas, don't ignore the sin you may find yourself pinned down in or pinned back by. Confess it and turn from it. And remember that prophecy from Micah 7 that Christ has tread all your iniquities underfoot, every single one of them, and rejoice in that. A second way to feel the thrill of 
uh, realized hopes found in Christ, uh, uh, perhaps allow me to just lean on a common Christmas idea to draw this idea out. Parents especially have a, have a, a way of saying this when they have younger children that Christmas can be magical again as they experience it through the eyes of their, their little children, whether that's a five-year-old opening gifts or, you know, little children with stockings and those kind of things. Like there's something about engaging and watching Christmas through our children that invokes the excitement that we once, not, we once knew. If it's not Christmas, it's, I remember the first time I took my son to Fenway Park and just was able to relive the experience of seeing that for the first time through his eyes. Or even when Nicole and I attend weddings, we're, we're reminded in the midst of the ceremonies of the covenants we, we made. What I'm, what I'm drawing out here, what I'm getting at is one of the best ways that God can restore the joy of our salvation is through you sharing your faith with someone else. And then you get to relive the experience of the thrill of that hope being realized in somebody's life for the first time. By being a part of giving the gift of faith to someone else, it can reignite your own faith and joy in your life too. So if I borrowed from another familiar Christmas song, there's, a, there's an encouragement here of this Christmas, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That journey of being an ambassador for Christ can restore to you the joy of your salvation as well. So I would love to encourage you like this Christmas or into the new year, who is it in your life that you need to share the news of Christ with so that they can come to the realization that their deepest hopes are realized in the person of Christ. I'd encourage you to do that and give that gift and be reminded by how thrilling the realization of that hope can be for someone else and get to relive that for yourself. 2,000 years ago, there was a new morning, a turning point in the drama of God's relationship with his people. Jesus is the savior of every single man and woman who ever lived, and he was born 2,000 years ago. And with that came the news of the gospel, the great news of the gospel, that God made good on his promise and peace between God and mankind is now possible through faith in this one born on this night 2,000 years ago. Merry Christmas, everybody. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Isaiah 61.1 Noel, earth and heaven embraced as a virgin beheld her newborn babe from realms on high to a manger on earth. Salvation had dawned in a lowly birth. No. Son of God, in kindness he came as a friend to the hopeless, the lost, and the lame. Our sins he bore, yet his name we despised, and the hands that brought healing were pierced as he died. No. of life 
its shadow and darkness reigned. Then out of death broke forth a great light as he rose up in victory. The glorious Christ. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world, so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Daniel 7, 13-14. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken Promise your 
your buried body began to bleed out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light, the joy of a great celebration. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2.
All right. As we send each of us into our Christmas, uh, I want to leave us with this proclamation made by the angels so many years ago. It's a message that still rings true through the ages. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas, everyone.